the text of terror in today's uh, video or soundtrack or whatever you want to call these things uh, we are continuing our series on the Bible and homosexuality and uh, we've been given this uh, series it's an 11 part series we're on part 5 today uh, by Pastor Chuck Breckenridge of Diversity Christian Fellowship in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, many times as a gay or lesbian uh, Christian, people tend to approach you with, you know, six or seven verses out of the scripture. And a lot of times we really don't have anything to tell them, you know. Uh, we don't have a way to respond. So this series has been a great series because it's it's going to go over each of these clobber passages, each of these terror texts, and it's going to give us some insight and some understanding as to what's really being said so that we have somewhere to stand, you know, when we're trying to defend our spirituality and our rights in the church. So today's video, he's going to cover a portion of the uh, clobber passages that is found in the Old Testament law, the book of Leviticus. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them below. So the next section we'll look at is the Leviticus. Um, because the law, now first of all, let's, let, let's be clear that we are no longer under the law. If we want to operate by the law, then we have to operate by all the law, which means we should be doing sacrifices. You know that we, you know, if you're, if someone's, if, if you've um, been caught stealing, we should cut your hand off. If you know, if uh, there's there's a number of things that that you can't do, um, certain foods that you can't eat. Um, that you know, if we want to get into legalism and say we're going to operate in one area of the law, you've got to do it all. There's no option there. The, you can't take part of it and leave part of it when you're living under the law. Um, so, so with that said, let's look at the law because uh, interesting, I think you'll find it interesting that I don't think the law really prohibits homosexuality as a, as, as a general rule. And I'll, sh I'll show you why. Um, if, we're, if you looked in Leviticus 18, verses 22, and then Leviticus 20, verses 13, and this is very common, uh, commonly used uh, in arguments against homosexuality. Um, and this is what they typically do. They take out this one scripture and, and quote it, Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. There's that word detestable again. And that's, about, that's usually what they'll quote. Well, you know, the law said a man shouldn't lie with a man like a woman because that's det it's, uh, detestable. I think the king just says it's abomination or something like that. Um, but if you back up and read the context, you know, and take one of the things I think, uh, even though it's nice and it's helpful for us in the, the way that uh, the interpreters have taken and divided the, the, the books up into chapters and verses, that is not the way it occurs in the original language. You know, when Moses was writing the law, he wasn't going chapter 18. Okay, this is verse 21. This is verse 22. It didn't exist in that way. So modern translators have put these stops and stuff in for our reference. Um, but So if you read the entire thing, if you back up, and to, to verse, uh, let's let's talk about uh, verse 19, 20, and 21, 22. Let's kind of go back. It says, Do not approach a woman to have sexual relations during the uncleanness of her monthly period. Do not have sexual relations with your wife's neighbor, uh, with your, I'm sorry, with your neighbor's wife, and defile yourself with her. Do not give any of your children to be sacrificed to Moloch, for you must not profane the name of your God. I am the Lord. Do not lie with a man as one lies with a woman. That is detestable. Do not have the sexual relations, and he goes on to talk about some other some other things and th that uh, that he prohibits. Um, interestingly, and even the Jewish community, uh, from our research, um, w points this out: um, is that if you if you're going to go by the law and you go by literally, then, then and say that this is talking about homosexuality in general, um, just take it at face value. Then that means it's okay; um, it's not acceptable for men to be gay, but it's okay to be a lesbian. Because he doesn't prohibit, he doesn't say anything about the, the uh, lesbians. So if you're going to go by the face value, you're, you're, then then even the world would have to say, oh, it's okay. 
you know, because he didn't prohibit it. He didn't say anything about that. He says specifically mentions the men, but he doesn't specifically. Why? Why does he not do that? If it was, if God is, God is a smart God. If God was going to prohibit homosexuality as a general rule, he would have said, and a woman shouldn't lie with a woman. But that's not the purpose of what he's writing here. And let me explain why. Um, because if you go back and you think about, um, about what, what, what he's talking about, um, the word that is used in the King James says abomination, the word in NIV says detestable in uh, verse 22, um, is the, the Hebrew word to-eba, T-O apostrophe E-B-A-H. And it means something disgusting. Specifically, anytime you see the, the prefix T-O, to, it almost exclusively refers to something involving idol, idolatry. Um, and so he says here, to'iba, so he uses a word that, a det- that means detestable that is almost exclusively used um, throughout the scriptures um, referring to idolatrous practices. So if he's, he's made a connotation here to do with, a, and if you go back and look at verse 21, it says, do not give your children to be sacrificed to Molech. So immediately before he says anything about the man lying with a man, he's mentioned an idol. He's mentioned an idolatrous practice. And Molech was a, uh, was a god back in that day that, that people would sacrifice their children to. And if I remember the details correctly, he was a, it was a statue that had it held its arms out in a, f- a certain fashion like you would hold, carry a child asleep or something like that. Um, and they would heat that up and they would put their children on it. To, to sacrifice them that way, it was a very horrific thing. It was considered to be a, um, you know, by our standards, was a was a very uh, gruesome thing. Um, and immediately after mentioning that idolatrous practice, he mentions the thing about a man lying with a woman. The significant thing about the fact that he doesn't mention women is because he, in this in this thing he's talking about um, how he is to be worshipped. And if you know, if you study out the scripture, if you study out the Old Testament, the Old Testament ways of worship, um, he gives them certain practices, sacrifices, certain rituals that they're going to do in the tabernacle and in the temple later on um, as a means of approaching him, as means of worshiping him. And one of the things that separates and that differentiates Christianity, I'm sorry, go back here, Judaism in this day, um, from the, the things around it, from the idolatrous practices around it, is that there was no place in the temple, in the tabernacle of that day, um, for sexual acts as part of worship. It was very common with the, the other idolatrous country, countries and nations around them. But in God's plan, he gives no place in the temple worship for a sexual act. No place. And so he... If you, if you think about what's going on in Leviticus and what's going on in this scripture with that in mind, why would it not be necessary to mention women? It wouldn't be necessary to mention women because women weren't in the temple and the tabernacle to begin with. They, were, they did not serve as priests. Women weren't allowed to serve as priests, and they weren't allowed to go into the priestly roles of worship. So there was, it wasn't that God is saying you can be gay or you can't be a gay man, but you can be a gay woman. Um, he was saying, you can't, my priest, talking about the priest, you can't have sex in my temple as part of my worship. Doesn't have to mention women. There's no reason to mention the women because they aren't there to begin with. But he specifically tells the men, this isn't a part of the way I'm worshipped. You don't worship me with this manner. And so I'm going to make sure, just so there's no confusion, and you don't see the things going on in the other idols, temples around the, the, the country and around other countries around you and their practices, and think it's acceptable in my house. It's not. So he tells the men, you're not going to do this in my temple. You don't have to mention women, because they're not there to begin with. It's, it's irrelevant. Had this been a, a, a topic that he was... Excuse me. Going to say flat out, homosexuality is a, is is forbidden. He would have been very specific because you go through and read that law. God was very specific throughout the entire law, and yet he doesn't mention women. Not because he's he's the, the, it's, he doesn't want to forbid that, but simply because it was not part of what he was trying to get across. He wasn't trying to get across that homosexuality and its nature was completely wrong. He was simply trying to say, in my temple, you don't worship me this way. And that doesn't have anything to do with homosexuality. It was, it was just sex is not a part of my worship in my temple. It did not occur in any form, fashion in the temple. And so that's what, he, that's what he's talking about there. 